Filters are amazing because they allow both content creators and users to have some control over what they're seeing on a dashboard. I thought I'd create a video to help new users to Dundas BI, as this is one of those things that almost everybody tries right out of the gates. The creation of filters themselves are fairly straightforward out of the box, but due to the amazing amount of flexibility around them, it can be something that can cause some confusion if you're not used to it. Let's take a look at how filters work and get rid of some of the common misconceptions about them. I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. So a quick heads up before I start. This is going to be a technical guide with the goal of helping new content creators specifically, getting to know the application a little bit quicker. There's a lot here, and if you're non-technical and following along, please understand that there's a lot here because we're trying to maximize flexibility. It is easy to set something up for the basic use case, but these filters can do a lot of things that even I'm not going to cover directly in this. So there's one basic concept that you need to understand in Dundas BI before you start getting into this, and that's a metric set. If you're not familiar with a metric set, here's a crash course. A metric set is simply a combination of data used to retrieve values behind a data visualization. As an example, a user might be interested in revenue over time by a specific set of products. To show this, we can drag revenue into our measures category, group it by date by dragging it into the rows category, and add product into the columns category to see that breakdown. And bingo, we have a visualization. It's this data that makes up the metric set. Now there's three main things you need to understand to really get the grasp of what's happening with parameters. First is the metric set filter. Now let's apply a filter using this button to the metric set. So say we want to filter this data specifically to North America. We drag continent into the slicer, and by setting that filter now, we can choose exactly what we want to see. You can see that by making this choice, new values are showing up to reflect what we've selected. So this is setting the filter on a metric set, or using a metric set filter. So far so good? This is where the next step, the view parameter, comes into play, which is our second term. You can think of a view parameter as something that holds a parameter value, but also talks to multiple metric sets to set their filter values. So for the example we already did with linking continent to the metric set filter, let's go ahead and add a view parameter to this dashboard. And you'll notice that North America is already set as the default for this view parameter. If I change the value here in the view parameter, you can see that it's going to cascade into the metric set filter. So the view parameter is controlling that filter that we previously set. So it's fairly simple what's going on here. A view parameter has one very magical thing that it does, but it opens up a lot of potential as it basically connects everything together. Here's the same dashboard where we've gone ahead and added one more visualization. Notice that we can connect multiple visualizations together by hooking them up into a view parameter. The view parameter is still holding a single value, but that value is being pushed into the two metric set filters that we've created. View parameters also allow you to pass information from one dashboard or report to another, or from one visual to another. You might have multiple dashboards with multiple layers, and you can use the view parameter to allow them to communicate with one another. Here's an example. This dashboard contains production numbers with specific areas in the factory. When I click on one of these areas, you can see that we're drilling down into detail. So what's happening here? Well, you've got a visualization that's taking the click, and it's passing information about what I clicked on into a view parameter hooked into the data grid. So as I'm clicking, you can see raw detail appearing. You can also connect view parameters to specific filter controls, which leads me to our last concept, number three, the filter control. So far, I've shown you this in kind of a reversed order so that you can see what's going on behind the scenes. And by the way, my experience with many novice users, even intermediate users, is they don't really understand that the view parameter is driving everything, not the filter control. So if we go and add a filter control to the screen, you can see this menu that pops up immediately. Does it look familiar? I'll give you a hint. That's right, it's the view parameter. By creating a filter control on the dashboard, it created a view parameter behind the scenes. The filter control is talking to the view parameter. The view parameter is talking to the metric set filter, or multiple metric set filters. 
This is all done automatically, which is why a lot of users don't know that this is happening behind the scenes. I've opened a lot of projects where people have gone and deleted different controls and added many view parameters and not really realized they were constantly adding them to their dashboards or what they were even doing. And if you create a bunch of these and you don't really know where they're going, they're linking all over the place, that can be a mess. So understanding this is really important. The view parameter holds the actual parameter value as we discussed, and it communicates to the metric set filter, which is causing the visualization to respond to change in values. So we allow the user to change it if they interact with the control that we've added to the screen, but you can also interact with a view parameter directly through scripts. So if you wanted to bypass the filter control, you can script into the view parameter, which will cascade a filter into your different visualizations. And of course, view parameters can also be modified by simple things like clicks and hovers or mouse events, like I showed you in the previous drill down example. So that's it. And hopefully with these three concepts, parameters will be a lot less mysterious for you. Also, if you like this video and you want to learn more, take a look at some of the other videos we've done to help new users in Dundas BI. There's a lot of concepts that we've covered and it should make the journey a lot easier. Maybe start with the user guide or one of the videos that we have on the FAQ. Thanks for watching.